Hi guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is May 1st, 2017 and I can't believe it's already May. Um, so this is a knitting podcast. So if you're watching for the very first time, welcome. I hope you like it. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much. I really appreciate it. So I'm recording on a Monday, which is unusual. I haven't recorded in about 10 days, I believe. And today is a public holiday, so it just made sense, except it is super rainy and dark outside. So I have actually turned on the light in front of me as well, and I'm just going to see how the lighting works out. So if it isn't great, I apologize. There's just nothing I can do, and frankly, today is the only time when I have time to record a podcast. So we'll just get through it. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, this is a knitting podcast and I will talk about finished objects, works in progress, acquisitions and a little bit of life in general. But before we do that, um, first of all, um, we had a pattern giveaway which was um, for the pyramid socks which were donated and designed by Sarah who has the Naughty Gnome podcast and Naughty Gnome designs on Ravelry and an Etsy store. and. I drew a winner, I locked the thread, I drew a winner using random.org and the winner is number 8, whose Ravelry name is Mana Kori and that's Eleni from Greece. So congratulations, um, I will just um, let Sarah know and she will donate the pattern to you. So thank you to everyone who participated. Um, also we have a knit along running at the moment which is the Keeping It Vanilla Cow and that's to knit a pair of socks starting uh, started after or on April 15th. It runs until the end of May and we have lots of prizes. I was actually going to talk about prizes today, but frankly, I just I just got back from our trip and I want to make most of the lighting. So I'm going to actually talk about the prizes next week, but they are all listed in the chatter thread on Ravelry. So if you want any of the information and the prizes and the deadlines or if you just want to be inspired, feel free to just pop over to the Ravelry group, which is called the Happy Knitting Podcast group. Um, so let's just jump right into finished objects and I'm somehow really shaky. I think I had too much coffee. So I have three finished objects this week and surprise, they're all socks. I had a bit of a finishing kick. I just wanted to get a few things done and then be ready to start new projects on our holiday. So um, first of all, I finished these socks. These are the Avenues socks by Mina Philip. This is the second installment of her New York sock collection, which is a club where you get a sock pattern once a month. So this is called the Avenues. It was knit out of Manos del Uruguay in the Allegria base, which is their sock base. And the colorway I believe is A6868, but it is listed in my project page. So just look it up there. It also has a, I believe Spanish name, something like that. And I don't know it, but it's all listed in the project page. And this is what the finished sock looks like. So as you can see, I did the um, patterning on the front. I did the staggered version. There are different versions. Um, so this one's you, um, the sort of slip stitch that you do does not line up and it creates this really fun texture. I also did a garter stitch heel. So I just knit a fish lips kiss heel and instead of purling, I just knit every row. Um, so that's basically it. I really like how these turned out, but I will say that this pattern somehow slowed me down a lot. These took me forever to knit, even though I don't really know why. And a, a few other people have said the same thing. It must just be the patterning, but they are really beautiful. I really enjoyed the yarn as well. I knit these on 2.25 millimeter US size one needles. Had a bit of a brain fart there. Um, and I did the medium size, which is a 60 stitch sock. So that's my first pair of socks that I finished. Um, I also finished the first pair of my socks for the Keeping It Vanilla Cow. So I cast these on, on April 15th, I believe. Um, and these socks were knit out of Wollmeise here. And this is the first pair of Wollmeise socks that I'm knitting for myself. Um, so this is Wollmeise Twin, which is their sock base in the La Gitane colorway. Again, listed in the show notes. And I popped in a very bright purple pink heel from Golden Yarns, who is Kim. She sent this to me and I just thought it went perfectly with these socks. And besides that, this is just a st standard vanilla sock. I did um, 60 stitches for this one because the yarn is slightly thicker. Again, I have two socks. I just don't have enough sock blockers. I'm super excited about these. I really like how they pulled 
in really regular sort of stripes. I really like the effect that I got. And yeah, I love knitting vanilla socks, which is why I started the Keeping It Vanilla Cow, obviously. I'm super happy about these and I can't actually wait, um, wait to wear them. I think I might put them on straight after this podcast tonight. So yeah, I'm really excited about these as well. And again, I use size one needles for these ones as well. And then I also finished a second pair for my vanilla, Keeping It Vanilla Cow. And that's this pair. Again, you've seen all of these before. Um, this is also a vanilla sock, but this one I knit toe up, which is what I don't do that often, even though I'm starting to like it more. So I cast on um, 24 stitches, increase to 64 stitches, and then just knit a tube. And then I put in an afterthought heel for these ones, and it turned out brilliantly. I really love this yarn. I love the colors. I think this has to be one of my favorite socks I knit recently. Um, this is out of Ponderosa Wolle, which is another German dyer. And the colorway is called Prairie Rose, or Prairie Rose in English. And for all these dyes, um, I just don't have the cards here, but all of them will be linked in the show notes and in my project page. So just go over there if you're interested and you're not from Germany, so you can't just maybe Google all of this. All of this is linked in the show notes. But just to give you a close up, this is how the afterthought heel looks. I think it looks really nice. I really enjoy doing afterthought heels lately. I always use the Kirby Werby tutorial, which is on YouTube. And yeah, I just, I just enjoy knitting a tube and then putting in the heels after. Especially with toe-up socks because I never know how, when, where to put the heel with toe-up socks. But this way it works out pretty well. So once again, um, I have two of these. <laughs> and these were knit out of um, the Luxury Sock or Luxus Sockenwolle base from Ponderosa, which is like my favorite base of theirs. I think in the future I'm not going to order their standard sock base anymore. Not because I don't like it, but just because I like this one so much more. It's such a cozy yarn to knit. And for me, these just flew off my needles and I think it has to do with the yarn. And the colorway is really, really awesome, I think. I like how it didn't turn into stripes or pull or anything. It just kind of had this really strong speckling throughout the entire socks. And it's very even as well, so I'm, I'm super happy about these as well. I actually really, really like these. So that's it for my finished objects and once again I feel like I'm rushing but oh well. Um, so let's move on to some works in progress. I have one that you've all already seen and all the other ones are new cast ones which is always exciting. So I'll start with the one that you've already seen which is the outline shawl. And this is as I said before a free pattern from um, Hedgehog Fibers. So if you go onto the Hedgehog Fibers website um, and onto patterns and you will find this pattern here and it's called outline it's the outline wrap and I'm knitting a scrappy version of it so I just made a magic bowl or I of I think 250 grams of um, sock yarn leftovers that I had and just used magic knots to tie them together and now I'm just knitting an outline wrap and let's see this is going to be hard to show you guys but I've made some progress on it. I'm using 3.5 millimeter needles. And so this is how it starts. It tends to kind of scrunch up. And then it turns into like orange and purples and browns. And you can see the stitch marker is where I was last week. So I'm now into the blues and this thing is getting quite big. I'm just going to knit this until I run out of yarn and then block it and then that'll be it. I'm really enjoying it. I really love this pattern. It's such a fun pattern to knit up, especially with scrappy yarns, I believe. I just, it's kind of like a scrap yarn blanket, except it's going to be a wrap, which is awesome. So I really love it. I actually really love this blue section that I'm in at the moment. And if you look at my gradient cake, it's going to stay in that section or color theme for a while. So I'm really, really excited about that. And yeah. I love scrappy projects, as you can see, because I'm also wearing a scrappy shawl. This is the Excuse Me Shawl by Stephen West. I just love um, using leftovers because there are so many memories associated with these leftovers. Most of these yarns have been gifted from other people or I use them in special projects. And it's also a great way to just, you know, it feels like you're getting a project off air for free because you're just using scraps, which you wouldn't be using for anything else anyways. So yeah, I really like scrappy projects. <laughs> so that's it for my outline wrap. Just dumping everything everywhere. 
Okay, it's not. Oh. So let's talk about some new cast-ons. I cast on all the things. I basically just had a big cast-on party when we went away on Friday night. Um, so where should I start? I'll start with these socks. I've been wanting to knit more socks for my sisters. As usual, they really love um, hand-knit socks. So I cast on a new rainbow sock for my sister, Elisa. So this is, let's see. This is under, again from a German yarn dye called um, Frau Oder Socke. And it only says her name very small here, but I will link it in the show notes. And the colorway is Wolken Regenbogen, which means cloudy rainbow. And this is exactly what this is. So this game came and half of it is a gray and the other half is rainbow colors. And so this is what it looks like caked up. And this is what the sock looks like. So I think it's really, really fun. My sister really likes it. So as you can see, I'm knitting another vanilla sock because obviously I'm hosting a vani vanilla sock knit along. So perfect. So I did 15 rows of two by two rib and then just a stockinette sock. This time I'm doing 60, 60 stitches because my sister has pretty small feet. And then I threw in a fish lips kiss heel. And now I'm just on the foot. I think I'm actually pretty much ready for the toe, but I didn't have a tape measure with me when we went away. So I just stopped because I don't want to knit too far and then have to rip back. So again, 2.25 millimeter US size one higher, higher sharps. I'm really enjoying how this is knitting up. And I think my sister will really like it. I hope it's not too colorful for her, but I don't think it will be. And if it is, I just knit her another pair. So that's one of my sock cast-ons. Um, and then I also cast on with the yarn that my friend um, Clara sent to me very recently. She has the Studio C Yarns Etsy store. store. It's very new. She also donated a prize, which I'll talk about in future episodes, but I showed it before. Um, she's a German indie dyer and she sent me um, two gradient cakes uh, out of sock yarn to knit a pair of socks. So it came in two, two um, exactly matching cakes. So you will have two matching socks. So I decided if it's already caked up and coming in two perfect um, cakes, I will knit those socks two at a time. And this is what they look like. So I believe this is a merino nylon base, but honestly, I don't have the tag with me right now, so I can't show you. But as you can see, it started with a very dark sort of blue purple, um, turquoise, and now it's getting gradually lighter. And as you can see with the cake, it's going to change colors even more. And I think this is just so beautiful. I absolutely love this. So again, I'm knitting these toe up. I'm going to put in an afterthought heel when I'm finished with the tubes. I cast on 24 stitches, went up to 64 stitches. And just to mix it up, I'm using the stitch pattern from the charade socks, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. I knitted before. I really enjoy this pattern. It's a real fun sort of slip stitch pattern. And I just modified it a tiny bit. I'm doing four knit stitches between those charade stitches just because I don't know I just really felt like having a bit of texture but not too much so I'm really enjoying how these are knitting up they're not really being displayed as well as they should be to be honest but yeah these are really really fun the sock yarn is really soft as well I love Clara's yarn and what's really fun as well is uh, you can see that they're perfectly matching to the point that the patterning on the back with the dark spots is exactly in the same place. I think that's just really, really fun. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this yarn and these socks will be for me. <laughs> and I'm again knitting them on 2.25 millimeter needles. These are my Chagu red lace, which I absolutely love. So um, the last project that I cast on is not a pair of socks, which is a little bit surprising for me. Um, so I wanted to cast on another um, Brio shawl and I decided to cast on another Excuse Me shawl, which is the shawl that I'm wearing right now. As I said, it's a design by Stephen West. And this one is going to be a fancy one because I'm using very special to me yarn. Um, and the yarn that I am using is 
first scan is from Das Mondschaf, which I only got a few weeks ago in her Pegasus, Pegasus base. And the cutaway is Rapture. And it's a 7525 Merino nylon blend, but this is one of the softest sock yarns that I've ever had. I really love it. I actually designed my Squishalicious shawl out of this base, out of this yarn. And then the second yarn that I'm using is Wollenwein. Again, super, super special yarn. This is my the first time I'm knitting with MCN yarn. So it's a Merino cashmere nylon. It's a Volker base in the Pandora colorway. And again, this was sent to me by a lovely friend and it's so special. And I just decided I don't want it to be in stash. I want it to be actually knit up. So this is the Wollen Vine Yarn Pandora and this is Rapture. And I just thought they look so beautiful together. This um, dark one actually has like the same pink in it as well in speckles. So these just wanted to be a, excuse me, shawl. So I decided to go for it and cast on. And I'm casting on on a 3.5 millimeter needle. The pattern is written for DK white, I believe, of Worsted. But the first one I knit, I knit out of um, 200 grams of fingering white yarn as well. So I decided I will just do the same thing because it really doesn't matter. So this is what it looks like so far. I really like how these colors are looking together. I really enjoy brioche knitting in general. I just, I just really enjoy it. And the other side looks completely different because the black is sort of like in, in the more in the focus. And I think this side looks really, really interesting as well. So yeah, I'm really, really happy about this. I just love this pattern. I think it's a beautiful pattern and I try to be more cautious of wearability, wearability lately because some sh um, shawls, I really like the shape. I really like the way that they're knit but I just don't really wear them. Whereas this, I just wear it all the time. So I know that if I need a second one, I'm going to wear it all the time as well. And these are totally my colors. I love pink, I love grays. So this is just absolutely perfect. And this pattern is actually very mindless once you get past the initial cast on and set up rows. So now this is just going to be super easy potato chip knitting and I love it. Yeah, I love it so much. I love how, the, how it looks on screen. <laughs> it's really weird, but I think some podcasters have said how sometimes the projects look even better on screen because you just see them on a bit of a distance. And yeah, so I'm really, really, really happy with this. And I need to stop showing it. <laughs> so um, that's it for my works in progress. And all of these have actually been cast on since Friday or Saturday and today is only Monday. So that's kind of crazy, but it was a long weekend and the weather wasn't great and I wasn't feeling great. So of course I did lots of knitting. So let's talk about some acquisitions. And I realized that the lighting is getting worse. I'm sorry about that, but I'm just going to push through. So first of all, um, I was really, really excited when a viewer got in touch and got me in touch with Maike, who has a German yarn store, which I've been looking at for ages, but actually never bought any yarn from. And this dyer is called Das Regenbogenschaf. Like I said, she's in Germany and I will of course provide all her details in the show notes in my Ravelry group. So I first found out about um, Das Regenbogenschaf because she had, I'm not sure if she still does, but she used to have these sort of fiber clubs where you get fiber every month. And I tried for a few months to get in, but I always just, I'm very bad at catching updates and making making it into clubs and all that. But anyways, that's what I know her from. And she has a beautiful Instagram as well. And lately I think she's been doing more yarn dyeing and she dyes um, yarn on very luxurious bases. She has yak bases. She has really, really interesting sort of mixtures of um, different yarns and stuff. And she also uses Pasquale yarns, which are yarns that are very ethically and eco-friendly produced as far as I know. Um, I will link to a to her website and also a, an article about her so you can find more about that there. But yeah, I think her yarns are very high quality and um, she got in touch and offered for me to try her Pinta base. And her Pinta base is her sock base. It's a 60% wool, 20% silk and 20% rami base, which again, it's very unusual for me. I've never knit with a base like that. And it sounds really, really interesting. And she allowed me to pick two colors. And she also donated a prize for the Keeping It Vanilla Cal. So one lucky winner will also be able to pick 
either two colors of her 50 gram skeins or one 100 gram skein of yarn in this space from her store and she will send it internationally to you. So if you needed any inspiration to participate in the cow, here you go. So the two colors that I picked were these two. I was immediately drawn to this color, which is funny because I'm not a huge blue person, but lately apparently I am. I just think this color is absolutely beautiful. This is called B2. And then because I thought maybe I'll knit sort of um, socks with matching heels and toes and cuff, I went with this yeah, colorway as well. This is B21. It's this beautiful purple and both of these have like different shades of each color. So it's like very, very tonal and beautiful. And I think it shows up really well here. It has, and the yarn has a shine to it, which is I'm sure from the silk. It's really, really beautiful. And because it has silk in it, which is a very strong fiber, this can definitely be used for socks. Or I might use it for something different, but I'm relatively sure I'm going to make socks out of this. Because it just kind of screams socks to me. So these yarns, they're very, very soft. I think they're going to have a nice drape as well. Like it's just, I haven't obviously knit with it yet. And I will tell you how I feel about it when I have knit with it. I'm planning to cast this on pretty soon. But just from feeling it and squishing it, these yarns feel very luxurious and very beautiful. I'm really excited to knit these up. So yeah, this is just a really interesting yarn. And like I said, Maike has lots of different interesting bases as well. So I just would recommend checking it out. And I will definitely let you know once I knit with it. So thank you so much, Maike, for getting in touch. I was really, really excited about this. And yeah, how many more times can I say that I'm excited about this? <laughs> so yeah. That's that. Um, moving on, um, when we were on our weekend trip, which I'll get into a little bit later, I visited a new yarn store. So I picked up this skein of Manos del Uruguay in the Allegria base, which is their sock base, as I mentioned before. It's a 75-25, but it's a very, very soft yarn. I think it's a two-ply. And the colorway for this one is A9741. A9 so I just was really attracted to these um, spla uh, splashes of purple. It's a really interesting color combination. And for me, most of their yarns actually have sort of slightly different colors, which I enjoy. I think it's really interesting to see new things. And yeah, I just had to pick this up because I thought it was really, really, really pretty. Another thing that I picked up was this skein. This is a very unusual skein for me color wise. I don't really go for these kind of colors, but something about it just just wanted to come home with me. And this skein is from this brand, which I don't know how to pronounce. I guess it's pronounced Araucania, but I have no idea really. But this, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. It's 100% extra fine merino. It's their botany lace base. I think the colorway code is PT1652. At least this is what I get. And I just really liked it. I don't know what I liked about it. It is very, very soft. It has a beautiful twist. And like I said, I have no idea what it's going to become, but it just wanted to come home with me. And then the last purchase that I made is similarly unplanned and I don't really know what I'm going to do, but it's this year and it's from the same brand. It's Aukanya. Um, this label is super unreadable. It's in a Puelo base, Puelo base. So this is what it looks like. And as you can see, this label, you can't read at all. So I'm actually not quite sure, but I believe that these are 100 gram skeins. And what it is, is 100% llama. So I, I, that just sold me. It is really, really beautiful to touch. I got two skeins in case you were wondering, because I'm not going to knit socks out of this. So it's probably going to become some kind of shawl. So I just thought with two skeins, I'll have more option, more options. And this was incredibly cheap, like ridiculously cheap. I have no idea why, but I just decided to grab two skeins. It's just, it feels really soft. I can't really describe it. It has, you can see that some hairs are sticking out. So it has a tiny bit of a halo, but at the same time, this feels really, really soft and still sort of rustic. I, I can't really describe it at all, but it's really interesting. And these colors are definitely kind of out there, but yeah, like I said, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, but it was pretty and it feels nice and I had to have it. So these are the things I got from that yarn store. 
all of these are very much out of my color comfort zone. But I'm super excited about these. These two actually go, not, go together really nicely as well, so that might be an option. But yeah, I, I rarely buy yarns where I have this little idea what I'm going to do with it. But this just kind of wanted to live in my stash, and it might live in my stash for a while, but I'm sure I'm going to find something to do with these yarns very soon because they're all very pretty and soft and squishy and yeah. So that's it for my acquisitions this week. Um, and because my computer is being moody and my phone is kind of trying to not record the podcast as I like it to, I'm going to keep um, this last section about my life rather short. So for life in general, honestly, my life is not that interesting lately. It was a long, long weekend, so on Friday night we drove down to Allgäu, which is an area in Germany in the very south. Beautiful, beautiful place to be. Both Kai and me both kind of dream of having a house there, there one day and just living there because it's, it's basically right in the beginning of the Alps and it just, it's just beautiful. And we drove down on Friday night and I hadn't been feeling very well all weekend and it all kind of got a lot worse on the drive down. We were stuck in traffic jams and it was snowing like crazy in the end of April, which is just insane. And I was just miserable. So by the time we got there, we didn't go out for dinner or anything. I was just lying on the couch feeling quite sick. And so it kind of took me a while to get into the holiday spirit. And for a while, I was actually too sick to knit, which, made me, which says a lot. But I got, I got better. I feel pretty okay by now. I'm basically, I'm, sure I'm going to be well again by the time it's time to go back to work. So, but because I wasn't feeling 100% all weekend, we kind of just took it slow and just hung out and chilled out. And um, like I said, we went shopping on uh, to Kempton on Saturday. And then yesterday we just kind of well, took a walk in the sun. We had lots of coffee. We just, we just hung out. I'm kind of sad that the weekend is over. It kind of goes too fast every single time. But such is life, and I think that's pretty much all that happened that is, that is worthy of telling you guys about. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this podcast. I hope you'll be back next week. I will try to record next weekend if nothing goes wrong. Um, and until then, happy knitting. Have a great week. See ya. Bye.